Well, this is my third video doing. I got no uh, internet to put them up. I can't open any. That's why you haven't heard from me. But, uh, there ain't really much we can do about it. We went out riding around. And you talk about chaos. People getting in arguments and fights. Like, if somebody wants to try to turn, if they're in the left lane, they want to turn right into the driveway they can't because of all the cars and there's arguing going on it's like come on give person a chance you know it, it, it there's we're, we're like no we're going back home we went we went down to see if the bank had electricity it's like every other light is working downtown but that's it uh, the, there's a couple of stores that has electricity and all, but it, it, it it's like I don't need any furniture. I don't need looking. You know what I mean? It, it's it's really chaos out there. Nothing but chaos, and it is hot. Jonathan and them do not have any electricity. So, we're going to keep the baby until the electricity comes on down there. <clears throat> so, and they're out of food. You can't get us check. And you can't even make it to, uh, where was it? Black Mountain? Yeah. Can't make it to Black Mountain. So, uh, oh, Lordy. It's it's not good. I was so oh, messed up. Been listening to the same uh, two videos that I have, and all, um, and one of them is the storm, and the other one is one of these that has the oh I got three, has the ending of the uh, Jordan Maxwell. And then I had the whole one of Jordan Maxwell. I'm afraid. I don't want to delete anything. Because it's entertainment. And, and take a guess. Me and Rick play cards. We've been together probably about 20 years. Ain't that right, Rick? About 20 What's years? That? We've been together for about 20 years. You post that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And we have never, never played a game of cards. So we pulled out the cards last night. And we played a game of cards. Uh, something, you know. <clears throat> and, I mean, <laughs> we were, were, he's wanting to play his uh, game and all. He can't because we got the internet. And <clears throat> oh, it won't keep up with nothing, he says. But <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> it, it, it's been a mess around here. People are showing their rudeness more. What? And it's cr it's crazy. But <clears throat> look at it this way. <clears throat> this this is a wake up call. For, you know, kids and people that think that, oh no, we got to have the internet, we got to do this, and we got to, uh, no. Let them struggle a little bit, <clears throat> it ain't going to hurt a thing. See, Jonathan and them, <clears throat> I, keep, I keep food put up for bad times, 
and it just went out the door. Because <laughs> Jonathan and her can't find no food. But they don't want to stay here, which I can't blame. I mean, I want, I'd like to be at my own home. Yeah, once you get a home, you don't want to be nowhere else. Yeah, once you get a home, you don't want to be nowhere else. I, I understand that. Well, we don't mind watching the baby. Yeah, but we got the baby. Uh, baby anyhow. Yeah. Um, they don't have any electricity, so it'd be better for us to watch her. And uh, <clears throat> who knows? This may be a wake-up call on him. You know? Well, yeah. <clears throat> Look, mom's doing the best she can. Now, why are you doing that? Uh, Thank you. What I know about pulling <laughs> apart. You know. <laughs> oh, come on, don't do this. I, I still can't see that good. You got hat? And it's like it's worse. <laughs> Hello in there. There it goes. Yeah, yes. But it is total chaos out there. I'd rather be home. <laughs> out from all that. Yeah, we were going to go to Walmart and check out Walmart because that's where everybody goes you know uh, just, just for, yeah Walmart's not even open nothing is really open well the gas stations are open out that way yeah, oh really the gas stations are open they said the, the gas, I can't remember which one they said I guess oh I can't hear you right there at uh, uh, what's the name of that chicken place Popeyes? No, you know what I'm talking about, right there. The Todd's? Oh, what is the name of that? Uh, Zachby's. Oh, okay. That little gas station right there was open. Yeah. And, and I would say probably a line of cars waiting to get gas. But... McDonald's is open, and let me tell you, uh, boy, oh my God, you talk about miles of cars just waiting to get into McDonald's. It's got the traffic, man, backed up. And they got to go get their fix. They got two drive-thrus. Yeah, they got two drive throughs Oh my God, you talking about messed up. That place is messed up. I, I'm so glad I'm home. <laughs> I don't want to go out. I, I was so bored yesterday, last night. Got up and took a shower, and I, right here in my hair, I plaited it. And I, and, and I don't know. My hair gives me a headache anymore. I guess it's worked so long, and I'm not used to it long anymore. And I, I'm talked to Rick and asked him if he would uh, trim my hair down. He said, "Yeah, but last night was no way of doing it. It was too." Oh, I forgot you did take a shower. Why didn't we cut your hair? Because it's too chaotic. Okay. Yeah, you probably we need to wait till all this is over. Yeah, we need to wait till all the chaotic is gone, and then we can do it. <laughs> but. Uh, even though I feel better today than I did the other day. Oh, yeah. Maybe I just knew we were fixing to go through this, and that's all it was. Who knows, Rick? Who knows? It don't matter. We all have bad days. It was definitely a bad day. It was a definitely a bad day. But, hey, we made it through it. Yeah, it sure did. But, uh, it's wild out there. It's like... Why in the world would people do uh, stuff like that? And uh, what's going on doing it? <clears throat> it's crazy. But I'm glad that we are home. It, it, we got, thank God we got milk. And we got just about everything we need. They may be some stuff that we don't have that we need, but 
It's not like we, we can't live without it. You know. And I'm glad it's over with. Done. Now we just got to, uh, the cleanup work to do. Okay, why don't you go in there? <clears throat> yeah, we got all the cleanup. Uh oh. <clears throat> well, Daddy was surprised. She, he, he, I taught her to point at what she wants. And he's like, man, you don't know how much that helped. I said, yeah, I taught her to point so that uh, she can get what she wants. If she can have it. There, there's things that uh, we give her that she thinks she ain't supposed to have. I think somebody's getting sleepy. Yeah, I think she is too, Papa. It's after 12. But, uh, she thinks she ain't supposed to have it. We yeah. let her have it. Kind of early when they come. And, uh, early. yeah, it was. But it, it, it helps her to learn and all. Oh, come on, don't do that. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, maybe it might be a, uh, uh, uh. I don't understand how come I'm having trouble today. That's not cool. Whoa, boy, that was almost bad. Uh oh. Quit pushing that chair. Quit. Quit. You end up breaking something. I just picked my glass of water up, or it would have been in the floor. Uh oh. And we were all gathered around her. And suddenly her eyes turned serpentine. And they turned bright red. And it was just freaky and obviously demonic. And I said, who are you? And the spirit said, I'm Leviathan, the power spirit of Anton LaVey. And you are a murderer. You've killed the black Pope. He is somebody that I've known about for quite some time. It took us a while to get this interview done. But his story is a story that I find absolutely fascinating. It has deep spiritual warfare. It has a lot of things that you guys are familiar with. In fact, let me just tell you. What happens when you adopt Anton LaVey's daughter as a pastor? Yeah, spiritual warfare ensues and it doesn't end very well. So this is a story that I think many of you are going to find fascinating and enlightening. So without any further delay, let's get to Pastor Dave Bryan and his journey with spiritual warfare against Anton LaVey. All right, today we have Pastor Dave Bryan on the show. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, Tony. How you doing? Hey, man. I'm good, man. I'm. I'm. Uh, just to let the audience know where we're kind of going with this. Uh, you were raised in a Christian household. You were in ministry, and yeah. uh, through what I would believe, and I'm sure you do too, divine order, you kind of quote unquote stumbled your way into a whole side of ministry that you never expected with uh, fighting against the occult and deliverance and things like that. Uh, uh, I find it fascinating. Uh, I I was shared with you earlier. I was raised Pentecostal. In fact, I was raised in the Assemblies of God myself, and so very familiar with uh, your perspectives on things and how you were raised. Um, <laughs> and I'm just really excited about this conversation. And before we get into this conversation, uh, I would like to let the audience know and give you an opportunity to share about your book because what we're going to talk about detailed thirty thousand times more in the book. Uh, so if you could let people know about the book and where they can get it. Yeah, well, thank you, Tony. So um, I, you described that well, by the way. I, I, we stumbled into the deep end of the pool, not knowing what was happening. and had to learn to swim. But anyway, uh, the, I wrote a book about the testimony that I'm going to share this morning. 
and it's it's this book. It's called The Serpent and the Savior, and um, the the subtitle is a true story of occult level spiritual deliverance. So, The Serpent and the Savior, um, and you can find that at churchofgladtidings.com. Uh, Cheryl and I have pastored the Church of Glad Tidings for uh, 38 years now. So that's churchofgladtidings.com. And there you can go to the store. And uh, if you look through the materials, you'll find the serpent, the savior. But uh, if you're interested in the story, you, you will be very interested in the book because there's so many uh, intriguing details. But uh, again, Church of Glad Tidings, we're in Northern California and Yuba City. And uh, if you go to that website, you can get the Serpent, the Savior. Awesome. Well, uh, the link will be in the description of this episode, and uh, people can definitely go check that out. Highly recommended uh, because you, I, I've done a lot of interviews. Okay, so I've done more interviews than I have episodes. Obviously, uh, you talk to people all the time doing what I do. And I think we just came out with episode 620 something. Uh, we come out with two a week. And in the time of doing interviews, you cover so many topics. You, I mean, I've talked to a, a guy who came from the church. Uh, I don't know if it was actually the Church of Satan, but he was a Satanist. Uh, and he uh, was a, a werewolf. Uh, 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 no, a vampire. He had, had gone the route of a, vamp, a vampire um, and came out of that lifestyle. Uh, I've talked to you know people who have Bigfoot encounters, these dogman encounters, witches, and all this stuff. I mean, we go any if it's if it's outside the norm, we're going to talk about it. And of all those years, the name Anton Lavey has come up on the show in conversation. Mm -hmm. I have never had anybody on my show who has had very direct interactions with Lavey and his family, mm -hmm. and. I'm very excited to have you share this story. Uh, and also, I just want to let the audience know, before we started recording, you have confirmed that I don't look like Anton LaVey. People, <laughs> people say I look like Anton LaVey. No, I'm like, no, no. Just because I'm bald with a beard, guys, no. doesn't mean... <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, I, I do appreciate that. And I wanted to just let the audience know, when you hear... <laughs> After you hear this man's story, just know he said, I'm nothing like Anton LaVey. So, <laughs> so with, with that said, though, I, I kind of want to hand it over to you. It's your story. Um, you know how to navigate the waters with it. I'm here to just kind of um, go along with the ride with you and have conversation, maybe ask questions along the way. Uh, but how did this all kind of come together for you? Because I know earlier in your in your ministry, you didn't give uh, maybe necessarily the 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 level of credence to supernatural um, anything as much as you do now. I mean, you believed it, but I remember you talking about uh, one instance with a with a guy in your college that you know kind of challenged you in a way. Uh, right. So you go from that to fighting spiritual warfare against Anton Lavey. How did we get there? You know. So uh, go ahead and take us away, my friend. Oh, well, that that's a good question. And yeah, then that's part of my story. So uh, I grew up, my father was an Assembly of God pastor, and I grew up in that um, in that culture. It is a culture and filled with a lot of good people. Uh, the questions that haunted me, Tony, uh, along the way, uh, and uh, I went to four years of a Bible college. It was not Assembly of God. It was a non-denominational uh, Pentecostal or charismatic Bible college. But Nonetheless, the, the thing that always haunted me as a young man is the huge gap between what we say we believe and and what we actually experience in life. And so um, I, I had, of course, as all of us, as, as Christ is drawing us into the light, into the truth, we have all kinds of experiences that he uses to get our attention. So I had a number of those, including the one where uh, you mentioned I was teaching at uh, Raymond Bible College in uh, Aberdeen, Washington, and uh, one of and and I was uh, I was the academic dean of the Bible College, and um, one of the students asked me uh, every time I would bring up a miracle of Christ because I was teaching a class called the Life of Christ, and he was in another one uh, that was called the Book of Acts. Well, 
I, I chose both of those subjects because I was that dean of the Bible college, so I could choose the subjects to teach. But uh, predominantly I did because those are the exciting subjects. Uh, the life of Christ, it's filled with miracles. Uh, uh, every, you know, every page in the, the Gospels is, is a miracle. And, of course, in the book of Acts, there are a lot of them. So uh, I, I began to teach, and this guy in the back, and I thank God for him. I, I thank God many times for him. He put his hand up and said, excuse me, you know, l let's say, first miracle of Christ is turning water into wine, right? So I, I was explaining the miracle and how great it was. Excuse me, have you ever done that? And I said, done what? He said, turned water into wine. And I said, of course not. Uh, why would I turn water into wine? He said, well, Jesus did. And I said, well, yeah, but anyway, it's a cultural thing, blah, blah, blah. But no, I've never turned water into wine. So you go on and Jesus heals a blind guy. Excuse me, you ever done that? I said, heal a blind guy? Yeah. I said, no, I've never done that. Okay. And he every time we came to a miracle, excuse me, you have done that. Well, you know, I, I got to thinking, this guy's a smart aleck. He's just, uh, you know, he, he's just like pointing out my weaknesses and to the class. And so after, <laughs> after class, I... Uh, I administrated the Bible college, so I, I went and I wrote him out his tuition check, and I was going to give him a full refund, and went out, he was in the parking lot, and uh, I said, hey, uh, here's a refund for your tuition for the college, and he said, well, what's that for? And I said, well, you're not in the college anymore, I've disenrolled you. He said, what? And I said, I, I, you're not in the college anymore. He said, I want to be. And I said, yeah, but I'm the dean of the Bible college and I don't want you to be because you're disrupting the class. And he said, by asking questions? And I said, the nature of your questions, you haven't asked anything except can I do what Jesus did? And he said, well, isn't that a fair question? And I said, well, yeah, but it's also embarrassing. Uh, because you are continually making a negative comparison between me and Jesus. And he said, well, you know, I'm a brand new Christian. I just figured if anybody had done any of these miraculous things, it would probably be the dean of the Bible college. And when he said that, it just was like an arrow in my heart because my whole life I had wondered, how come we say this and we live over here? What's what gives? And so, I said, "So you you weren't trying to embarrass me?" He said, "No, I I was sincere, but I can see why you're embarrassed." And I thought, "That's a good, honest answer." So I said, "Well, uh, give me the check back. You can stay in school, but uh, I want you to know something. I know about every miracle in the Bible up here." but I have never been personally involved in a miracle, except for the saving of a soul and the forgiveness of sin, which is miraculous, but you know what I'm talking about. I, uh, he, he was commenting on the physical miracles of Jesus yeah. doing something supernatural that was impossible without divine power. I said, I've never been involved in that, so if you promise never to ask me about that again, you can stay in the school. So that was our agreement, but I went straight to my father, who was ordained when he was 17 years old, and uh, woke him up. It was a night Bible college. I, I said, Dad, we got to talk, and I just asked him, I said, have you ever healed anybody? And he gave me, and my dad, by the way, I love my father. I want to honor him. He's a good man. Uh, he, he just didn't have the experiences that most American uh, Christian leaders have not had. And so he said, oh, we pray for people all the time. And, and God, sometimes he heals them slowly. And sometimes uh, it, it's immediate and miraculous. And I said, okay, that, that's fair. But I have not seen any immediate miraculous, uh, which means the people that I have seen that, that we're talking about being healed, there was nothing in their life that was any different than a witch, a warlock, an atheist, an agnostic, 
it was just the the powers the regenerative powers of their body and and they beat the sickness and they got better and, and nobody views that as a miracle so anyway uh you know he said oh you're working too hard you need to get more rest uh, don't be so hard on everybody and and i said well i i'm not done yet i want to know if you've ever cast a demon out of anybody and he said well what's that got to do with it and i said what that has to do with it is that that is one of the major miracles that is talked about repeatedly in both the life of christ and the acts of the apostles and i'm wondering why we're not doing it since jesus said these signs shall follow those that believe in my name they will cast out demons I said, I'm just wondering why that is completely absent from our repertoire of things to do as Christian leaders. And uh, he said, and, and again, I love my father. He's in heaven now. But he actually uh, looked me in the eye. He said, well, Dave, I'm not sure that there are many demons in America. Now, this was years ago. And, and uh, most people think America is pretty demonized by now. But at the time, I just thought, how, how does that make sense? And he, I, I asked him that. He said, I think most of them are in India, and the islands of the sea, and Africa, where they worship demons and uh, through idolatry. I said, well, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. There were plenty of demons in Israel during the time of Christ. And he said, you know, I've never thought of that. But uh, th that was a watershed moment for me I remember telling him, I said, Dad, I love you and I respect you, but I do not intend to be in my 60s and have never cast out a demon or seen somebody heal. I said, I just, I, I can't live my whole life with such a huge gap between what we say we believe and where we live. So anyway, he said, well, son, I'll be praying for you. You, you know, you're probably disillusioned, but that was a watershed moment in my life. And and this, of course, there are many, many uh, other things that that um, played into uh, what happened many years later. But I decided that I didn't want to be a Christian leader. 